Each year, more than 1.9 billion tons of steel are produced, resonating from the roar of blast furnaces to the skeletons of structures across the globe. From bridges that unite continents, to skyscrapers piercing the clouds, to ships crossing vast oceans, all carry within them the lifeblood of modern industry. Steel's story begins in seemingly lifeless rock, transformed by human hands into a gleaming, resilient metal. Achieving this requires a demanding journey, from mining, smelting, and refining to shaping, where the brute force of machines meets the precision of human craftsmanship. Whether it takes the form of a slender wire, a broad sheet, or a massive structural beam, steel bears the weight of the modern world. In this video, we'll follow steel's remarkable journey, where every stage of transformation tells a story of ingenuity, perseverance, and humanity's ability to harness and master the raw materials of our planet. In the vast landscape of global industry, steel stands as a pillar that upholds the modern world while leaving a heavy footprint on the environment. The steel-making process alone accounts for 3.8% of the world's annual CO2 emissions, making it a prime target in global emission reduction strategies. Inside the blazing blast furnaces, as iron ore fuses with coke, thousands of tons of greenhouse gases are released, the price humanity pays for progress. But the story is turning a new page. The global steel industry is entering a technological rebirth, replacing coke with hydrogen to separate oxygen from iron ore, powering electric arc furnaces with renewable energy, and expanding scrap recycling on an unprecedented scale. These innovations can cut emissions by up to 70% compared to traditional methods. Green steel projects are emerging, promising an era where the strength of steel no longer comes at the expense of the planet, and every future building and bridge can carry a story of sustainability. The journey of steel begins in vast iron ore mines, rich in iron oxides with shades of deep red, brown, or gray. The very origin of one of the most durable metals in modern industry. While iron ore is found worldwide, the largest and highest quality deposits are concentrated in Australia, Brazil, and Russia, supplying hundreds of billions of pounds each year. Beneath what appears to be ordinary soil lies a resource formed over millions of years, waiting to be awakened by the power of modern mining technology. Geological survey crews drill deep boreholes, sometimes over 100 feet down, then pack them with an industrial explosive mix of ammonium nitrate and diesel fuel. A single, precisely calculated blast can shatter thousands of cubic yards of rock, unleashing energy on par with tens of US tons of TNT, exposing the ore-rich layer beneath. The moment the dust settles, giant hydraulic excavators, each bucket holding up to 88,000 pounds of material, dig into the loosened ground loading the ore into massive haul trucks that can carry 440,000 to 660,000 pounds per trip. At the largest operations, more than 2.2 million pounds of explosives are used every month, triggering hundreds of blasts that free millions of U.S. tons of ore. Each mining cycle strips bare multiple acres of land and feeds a relentless industrial rhythm, a giant machine that never stops. Moving iron ore from deep underground into the first chapter of its transformation into steel. After being extracted from open pit or underground mines, iron ore is loaded onto heavy-duty trucks or massive conveyor belts to reach the collection area. From there, depending on the location, the ore can follow different routes. In mining sites near the coast, specialized freight trains or giant conveyor systems deliver the ore directly into storage bunkers before being poured into the holds of bulk carrier ships. At inland mines far from the sea, heavy trains are the primary option, moving millions of tons of ore towards steel plants. Every step of this process is engineered to maximize speed, minimize loss, and guarantee a continuous flow of raw material that fuels the global steel industry. Once the iron ore arrives at the plant, it is crushed by high-capacity grinding systems. Large chunks of rock are broken down into smaller pieces, then ground even finer to release as much iron as possible. This process increases the surface area while helping separate out unwanted minerals. The crushers operate continuously with intense pressure and friction, producing a fine ore powder of uniform size. 
making it ready for the next stage of separation and processing in the steelmaking journey. Once the iron ore has been ground into a fine powder, the journey of purification begins. The mixture is blended with water into a thick slurry and directed into massive flotation cells. Here, the key lies in flotation reagents, surface active chemicals added with precise control. These agents render the iron-bearing particles hydrophobic, while silica, clay, and other impurities remain hydrophilic. As compressed air is continuously pumped from the bottom, millions of microscopic bubbles rise, attaching themselves to the chemically tagged iron particles. The ore gathers into clusters, forming a thick, reddish-gray froth that floats to the surface. Meanwhile, the worthless gang sinks steadily to the bottom, completely separated from the valuable material. This iron-rich froth is carefully skimmed off and collected through multiple cycles, producing a concentrate with fee content often exceeding 65-67%, more than twice that of the raw ore. It marks a critical turning point where unshaped stone is reborn as a refined resource, fully prepared for the demanding path of metallurgy ahead. After obtaining the concentrated ore from the flotation tanks, the next stage is filtration and dewatering. The iron-rich slurry is fed into vacuum filtration systems, typically drum or disc filters. Under the pull of pressure differentials, water is drawn out while the fine ore particles remain, forming a moist filter cake on the surface. This step significantly reduces the moisture content ensuring the material is better prepared for the pelletizing and subsequent firing processes that follow, allowing them to proceed with greater efficiency. From the filtration tanks, the iron concentrate emerges as a fine dry powder, red as dust. But in this loose form, it is far too fragile to be fed into a furnace. To solve this, the powder is mixed with a measured amount of water and binding agents, then poured onto giant rotating discs tilted at an angle. With each steady turn, the tiny grains begin to roll and cling together, growing in size, rounding out, and transforming into small pellets with a distinct reddish-brown hue. By the time they leave the discs, the formless powder has become millions of fresh pellets, uniform and spherical, yet still soft and delicate. These young pellets must endure further stages ahead to gain the strength and hardness required to withstand the fiery heart of steelmaking. From the great conveyor, the glowing red pellets continue their journey into the rotary kiln, a colossal steel cylinder stretching dozens of meters, set at a slight incline and turning slowly on its axis. Inside, flames shoot from the kiln's mouth, sweeping the entire length and turning the chamber into a blazing river of heat. As the drum rotates, the pellets tumble and roll evenly through temperatures ranging from 1 to 200 to 1 to 350 degrees. This constant motion ensures each pellet is baked uniformly from core to surface, eliminating weak spots or cracks. Impurities and residual dust are burned away, while the ore particles fuse together into a dense, solid structure. By the time they reach the kiln's end, the once fragile spheres have hardened into resilient pellets, clad in a tough shell and ready to move onward into the cooling stage. Once the iron ore has been pelletized or sintered, it joins forces with the blazing hot coke fresh from the ovens, all converging at the top of the blast furnace, the beating heart of iron making. Inside these towering structures, layers of ore, coke, and limestone are charged in sequence, meeting a powerful blast of hot air injected from the base. At temperatures soaring above 2000 degrees CC, the coke ignites fiercely, releasing carbon monoxide that strips oxygen from the ore, reducing it into streams of molten iron glowing red hot. Yet alongside this fiery transformation comes a staggering cost. Massive volumes of CO2, fine dust, and noxious gases escape from the furnace, making this core step of steel production one of the largest single sources of industrial pollution on the planet. Once it leaves the blast furnace, the molten iron, still blazing red hot, is transferred straight into the basic oxygen furnace, a colossal steel vessel lined with refractory bricks. Here, the raw metal undergoes a violent purification, 
From above, a massive lance descends, blasting a jet of pure oxygen at tremendous speed onto the liquid surface. The oxygen ignites instantly, stripping away carbon and impurities, sending pillars of flame and bursts of smoke high from the furnace mouth. Amid the roar and blinding sparks, every fraction of carbon is burned off, transforming brittle pig iron into steel, cleaner, tougher, and infinitely more versatile. It is the very moment of rebirth when crude metal evolves into the foundation of human civilization. But steel cannot remain in its molten state. Immediately, it is channeled into continuous casting machines. Streams of liquid steel pour into water-cooled molds, solidifying into billets, slabs, or blooms. This marks the first tangible form of steel. From these semi-finished shapes, the journey of transformation continues. Reheated and sent through colossal rolling mills, the steel passes under rollers weighing dozens of tons. Thick slabs are stretched into thin sheets. Blooms are drawn into massive coils, and square billets become long, slender bars. With every roll and every press, the metal moves closer to its destiny, rising as the skeleton of a skyscraper, spanning the length of a bridge, or forming the frame of an automobile. From the searing oxygen furnace to the thunderous cadence of the rolling mills, the entire process is a symphony of metal. The moment when steel is born, clad in the form the world has been waiting for. Steel today is not born only from iron ore. A great part of modern production begins with scrap. Weathered beams from dismantled buildings, cars that have traveled millions of miles, or machines long retired from service. All of it is gathered and fed into immense electric arc furnaces, where giant electrodes unleash arcs of energy hotter than 3,000 degrees Celsius, melting every shard of discarded steel into a glowing river of metal. Once liquefied, the steel is purified. Impurities are stripped away, and alloy elements are carefully adjusted until the blend meets the exact standards required. What makes this method stand apart is its power source. Instead of burning coke, it runs on electricity, and more and more of that electricity now comes from renewables. The result is profound. Carbon emissions cut by 60 to 70 percent compared to the blast furnace route. To picture it more clearly, making a single ton of steel from scrap can save around 75 percent of the energy and nearly 90 percent of the raw materials otherwise needed when starting for more. From what once seemed like waste, steel is given a second life. Cast into billets, rolled into beams, pipes, or sheets, it enters the world anew. Every bridge, tower, or ship built from this recycled steel carries with it a story of renewal, proof that steel can be both powerful and sustainable, a circular material built for the future. Before leaving the mill, steel must undergo one final trial by fire, a rigorous round of testing to prove its worth. Each batch is subjected to strict inspection, stretched to measure tensile strength, compressed to gauge its load-bearing capacity, and scanned with ultrasound and x-rays to uncover the tiniest hidden cracks deep within. Only the pieces that meet every standard are allowed to move forward, for even the smallest flaw could compromise the safety of an entire bridge or building. Once it clears inspection, the steel is cut, bundled, and packaged with precision. Coils are tightly bound with special steel straps, rebar and beams are stacked, secured, and labeled with their grade, dimensions, and production batch. For export, many products are wrapped in protective coatings to guard against moisture and rust during long voyages. At last, everything is ready to be loaded onto trucks, trains, or ships, setting out from the factory toward construction sites, mechanical workshops, and distant ports across the world. Behind the fiery glow of molten steel lies a reality seldom spoken of. The toll on the very people who stand inside the mills. These workers endure environments where temperatures can soar beyond 1,500 degrees Celsius, surrounded by air thick with fine dust and exhaust fumes. Over time, such exposure leaves invisible scars. Chronic respiratory illnesses like pneumonia and asthma, cardiovascular strain from relentless heat and noise, and the crushing pace of nonstop shifts. For many, this becomes the quiet price paid to keep the wheels of a vast industry turning. Yet the picture is not entirely grim. Across the world, steelmakers are introducing cleaner technologies, gas filtration systems to purify the air, robotic automation to take over the most dangerous tasks, and regular health monitoring to protect the workforce. 
These measures may not eliminate every risk, but they signal a crucial shift. Steel is not only being reshaped to be greener for the planet, it is also on the path to becoming safer for the very people whose hands and lives have forged it. Steel is more than a metal. It is the hidden framework of our cities, the silent strength behind every bridge, every ship, every machine that carries us forward. From blazing furnaces and roaring mills to the hands of those who endure the heat and dust, steel embodies human resilience. Our drive to shape the raw earth into something enduring, but its story is far from finished. With recycling, clean energy, and bold innovation, steel is being forged again, this time for a sustainable future. Every beam, every plate, every coil of steel carries both our past and our tomorrow. It is not just forged in fire, it forges the world itself. If this journey of steel inspired you, Leave a comment with your thoughts, hit the like button, and subscribe to The Factorin for more stories of how the world's most powerful materials are made.